short statement and then I have a genuine question. Last November in Sacramento, there were about 4,000 educators that gathered for something called Closing the Achievement Gap, which referenced the difference in outcome between many minorities taking tests and uh, Caucasians and, interestingly enough, lumped together Asian Americans. After many, many speakers and breakout sessions, the conclusion was that that gap is caused by institutional racism. This is probably a question for Warren, but the question really is, if this is accurate, if we accept this even temporarily, how do we begin to address that that's perpetuating or creating or causing these ongoing things? Needless to say, a, a tough question. Um, one thing is someone that has been involved in education, mainstream education, for a long time now, one, one thing I, I try not to be ashamed of is the fact that Asian Americans do so well. You know, for, for a while there, it was like we were always trying to show how we had problems. You know, we have, we have these kind, we have gangs, we got drugs, we all, we, which we do. But it's like we were focusing on all the bad things to show everybody that we had problems. And, and now, in, in terms of education, particularly when they talk about the education gap and they put Asians in a certain place, uh, one, we have to disaggregate so people know what Asians we're talking about. But th there's another thing that I've shared for a while now, which is that the reason Asians are successful in education is because they study. You know, I, 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 I tell everybody, and I speak all over in terms of these education conventions and conferences, and I tell them I have a really big secret and the room gets really quiet. <laughs> I tell them I can tell you why Asians do so well in education. It gets real quiet, and I tell them it's because they study. You know, they maybe are not, they don't know all the dances, maybe they don't have a real good tan, but they study, they study their ass off. And I was at a conference where we were dealing with the research and they were talking about Asian families and African American families. And the researcher was African American and he said he had done the study and it's a matter where uh, families intervene, have an intervention in terms of education. He said in the families he studied, basically, and this is a generalization, but the Asian family has an intervention on the education side if their child gets a B or an A minus. Suddenly the flags go up, the whistles go off, oh geez, we got a problem, you know, <laughs> let's get a tutor, let's do something, we gotta intervene now. And he said in the African American families he studied, he said the intervention happened if they got less than a C. And I, I think in our families we have learned that it's almost a survival, a, a survival path that's been open to us from the very beginning is that we've learned if you do well in school, you could be relatively successful. And if you do well in school, you know, a lot of it isn't verbal, so we don't have to worry about that part of it. You stick to the math, you stick to the sciences, you don't have to get too abstract or too creative or use too much imagination. It's a pretty good path to follow. And I think as survival technique, and I know that's probably a, a little melodramatic relative to describing it as such, but if you look at a lot of paths that people in our community have taken to be successful, you know, we didn't figure the way to be successful is to be a movie star. We didn't figure the way to be successful was to be a baseball player or a sports star. The way to be successful was to be a pharmacist, to be a dentist. Uh, things that have served us well, and, and people have done extraordinarily well in the profession as professionals as well as economically. So I, I, I think that's one thing. One thing I, I deal with in education is that I'm real concerned about young African-American men and Latino men. Uh, the women are doing so much better than the men. 
So I'm saying, look, at, you're not going to be basketball players, and there's only one Kobe, and, you know, there's only going to be one Snoop Dogg. And there could be a whole lot of doctors, a whole lot of whatever. So I, I think a lot of it's expectation. A lot of it's uh, what we demand of ourselves. A lot of it's based on family structure. And uh, by the same token, on the flip side of the same coin, I get mad at Asian parents when they treat their kids like a failure if they don't get into UCLA or Cal. Like, oh my God, oh Jesus, it's the end of the world. Give me a break. Send them to El Camino College, have them do two years, and they can go to Cal. Doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end up. So, the, the achievement gaps are. And Warren, I'd like to thank you for your work in this area. I, I've seen Warren come to Cal State Dominguez Hills and spread that message of responsibility and how studying does lead to better grades and un, unapologetically. And the students respond very positively to that. And so your message is being heard by many of the students at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Mitch, can I, yes. can I just interject for one second? And it's about what Warren said about uh, uh, what he was just saying. I think in our family, um, and the guys can, can uh, agree or disagree with me here, but w we didn't put a lot of pressure on the guys uh, specifically. I mean, I know I put pressure on the guys. It's, that's the way I am. But not when it came to, like, grades. Yeah. I, the, I think the, the message that we gave them, it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't a, it was like, do the, do the best you can. And it was giving them more responsibility. Uh, I don't know, maybe it would have been better for them. It was hard for them because we didn't say, okay, if you get a B, then you get a Nintendo game or, you know, we didn't do any of that. They didn't get games, they didn't, we, we didn't uh, do any of that, you know, rewarding <laughs> stuff, much to their, you know, um, you know, chagrin. But um, it was a lot on them um, because he, and Warren and I didn't feel that, that the grade was that not that important. Um, it was that they, they developed themselves, and it is getting back to those simple things about being healthy and happy and being able to figure out things for themselves. Um, of course we wanted them to do, to do well, but I think we, we didn't, we were in some ways different than, uh, one thing I remember being a little surprised when Warren told, told them, both of them, that hey, you know, in high school, they're, yeah, they had their struggles in high school, um, but this, he said, Warren told them, you know, just, you know, you don't have to worry about getting into a, a, you know, a great college. You know, if you want to just take, you know, graduate high school, take a year off, figure out what you want to do. And it was like, wow. Actually, I was like, yeah, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I, I'm, do, you, do you remember that? And him telling you, I, because when I remember something, I said, that's, it put a lot of responsibility on them to do the best they could do, but it, it respected them. Um, and I, I guess it took pressure off. It, it's a lot of pressure to make, trying to make your kids, you know, because basically we want them, you know, making, trying to make your kids do what you want, it's, it's impossible, really. You know, you can just nurture, you can't really mold. Lane, Dad's going to try and remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very good advice. Next question.